Are you a stay-at-home mom who is wondering how you can get it all done and looking for some hacks so that you can get more work done in your business and still take care of your family? If so, stay tuned because in this video, I'm going to be breaking down eight hacks that are going to help you. If you're new here, my name is Anita. I'm a video marketing and social media strategist, and I help business owners create content that converts. And I'm also a stay-at-home homeschool mom of two. And I want to share some of the tips that have been helpful for me that I think will be helpful for you. Before we get started, I want to invite you to join my free Facebook group, Video Marketing for Entrepreneurs. This is good for you, even if you're not a mom, but absolutely, if you are, it is going to give you some tips to help you get more visible in less time. Also, I'd love for you to subscribe to this channel and hit the like button if you appreciate it when people share with you how it is they get things done. Now, this video was really prompted after I had a good friend of mine send me a message saying, I don't know how you work full time with kids at home. And I want to tell you that I do not work full time hours, but I am full time in my business, meaning I don't, this is not a side hustle. Um, when I'm working, I'm working on my business. It's not one of many things. But what I want to first say is you want to adjust your expectations just a little bit. You cannot do everything that maybe somebody who has no other responsibilities than growing their business can do. But you do have time for what's important. And that is a shift that I think is going to help you really thinking about, I always have time to do what is important. Now, listen, are there absolutely things that I don't do? Absolutely. And you decide what those things are going to be. So just know that when I'm super succeeding in one area of my life, it's because I've chosen that that area is a priority and I've deprioritized other things to make that happen. Every time that you're saying no to something, you're protecting your yes to whatever it is you were trying to achieve. So I say no to things. And sometimes that can look like having a perfectly organized pantry. I say no to that. <laughs> All right. Now, I think that shift was helpful, but let's also dive into some real key hacks to help you grow your business. Hack number one is to utilize nap time. Now, I'm not just going to tell you to use nap time and hope that it happens. It starts before nap time. Listen, those children didn't wake up and your goal of the morning is to make them tired for nap time. <laughs> this could look like making sure that you meet a friend at the park for a play date so that they run and get all of their energy out. This could look like doing something really fun in your backyard. This could look like chasing them around the kitchen if that's something you want to do to help them just wear themselves out and have fun memories with you. It's also going to kind of fill their cup so they don't feel like they're trying to get mommy's attention. This is something that I use on days when I just like have a really important meeting scheduled during nap time. I make sure that we spend that morning so busy that nap time is just a natural occurrence for them. That's going to roll into option number two, utilize play bins. Now, I used to hear people say this and I was so overwhelmed with like, how in the world do you do this? Literally, you can take some pretty small bins, put some special things that you know are going to be entertaining in these bins. And I would have like three or four of them. And you're going to rotate when these come out. So in a given week, I might bring a certain bin out on a Monday and you don't see it again until like the next week. Doing this really helps to engage my kids. And right now my kids at the time of filming are five and a half in 20 months. So they're still pretty young. Providing that novelty of this is something that you haven't seen in a while has been really helpful. And I also use this as an opportunity to introduce new things. So when I find maybe a new book or maybe there's a toy we're adding to our collection, I'm going to kind of rotate that in. I also do a bigger toy rotation where I will go through the playroom and I just kind of collect some different things in a bin and stick it in the garage for maybe a month. And what will happen then is they will forget that these toys exist. On a day when I just like really need to get things done, I'll bring that bin in and kind of reintroduce those toys. They're just super excited about that. I always leave in the playroom the most favorite consistent building toys because those are really big for us. 
And those are always going to be exciting things like magna tiles and Lincoln logs, but anything to kind of go with that or to be kind of a specialty building toy gets rotated in these different fashions to really be exciting. Play-Doh and kinetic sand are in rotation bins for us. They're not always available. And those are super fun and loved by my children. So I use them strategically to make sure that I can get some time to do the things I need to do. Tip number three is to set work time. Now, I know that your family is absolutely important. And first on my list of importance is my family. But I strategically set my work times around times that my kids are either sleeping or my husband is home and able to help with the kids. If you don't have extra help, this could also look like going to the gym and using their child care so that you can get some things done. It could look like finding someone to help you. It could also look like just maximizing working while your kids are sleeping or teaching your kids to self-entertain. And depending on their age, depends on whether or not you can do that. But giving them that like, this is our quiet time for an hour and that's the hour that mommy's getting things done can be really helpful. That works really well with my five-year-old. My one-year-old, not so much, but he gets tired, takes a nap. And so we just like use that as our quiet day. For me, work hours are super important so that I can get the things done that I need to get done. And it helps me to know that I have time to get it done instead of feeling like I'm going to shove things into the day and not knowing when it's going to happen. I know that this is my work time. And as much as possible, I'm going to try to protect that. That means I can be focused on playing with my kids or, you know, helping with the house or whatever it is in the other times. I think that really rolls into hack number four, which is to set priorities. Again, we can't do everything and it's absolutely okay that you can't do it all. No one does it all. The people who are absolutely succeeding in one area, they're always saying no to some other area of their life. So you just decide. And part of this is really creating your business around your priorities. And there might be seasons of life where your young kids and homeschooling and growing your business are super priority and other things like Pinterest crafts, or maybe some of the other things aren't on your list. This also could mean thinking about how you can really get help in your business. I'll give you an example. I use Target Drive Up. And the reason I use them is because you can put a same day order in and pick it up within two hours. So I use that instead of taking on my whole family into Target. Um, that really helps me pick up like needed necessities when possible. I also kind of think about my meal planning and grocery shopping day and really set that as a priority in my schedule so that I'm not always having to run to the store. I also have systems around things like laundry and other things that need to get done. And I would just invite you if you're listening to this and you have no systems and no plan and no help and no structure at this time, start small. And just really think about what could you shift in this next week that would help you in future weeks. That's going to really open up some doors for you as to how you can prioritize your main things and maybe get some help in the other areas. All right, hack number five is to batch your work. So this YouTube video is actually from me doing that. My husband took my kids to the park and I am filming all the YouTube videos that I can in one day. And that's how I make sure that my YouTube channel is consistent. I also batch my short form videos on TikTok and I batch create other content in other places so that I can make sure that my business can continue to grow. When things happen, when I get sick, when my kids get sick, um, that's really been a game changer for me. Hack number six is to celebrate. Now, how is that a hack? Listen, there's no award for you when your house is perfectly clean. There's nobody coming to give you a trophy because you kept the kids alive all day and know that some days that is absolutely what you feel like you need, but you need to celebrate. Celebrate when you have made it a whole week with keeping the laundry together and celebrate when you hit some sort of goal in your business or you were consistent in your content or you had like a new amazing thing happen. Celebrate because you deserve to be celebrated. It is not easy being a mom and running a business, but it is absolutely possible. 
And I want you to absolutely encourage you that you can do it. Step number seven is to have support. And I think that support really starts with you having your own back because the reality is you can look at what everybody else is doing and continue to compare to them, but maybe they're not doing what you're doing. One of the things that was really hard for me to see in my first couple of years of business is that I was a mom who was trying to grow a business and really prioritize my family. And some of my other friends, they didn't have businesses. And so they didn't quite understand why I was kind of focusing on some of these things. That's okay. Have people around you who also are doing what you're doing. Even if this is just digitally, some of my best business online besties, as I call them, really are people that don't live here. And maybe they're not in my specific circumstance, but they are going after the goal that I'm going for. And that's been super valuable. Hack number eight is to make choices, not excuses. And what I mean by this is there's going to be days where you can absolutely just kind of let your day go along the way and feel like things are happening to you. Or you can decide to choose. You can decide to choose to make something a priority, choose to make something not a priority. But I would really encourage you to make choices rather than excuses. Because here's the thing, you're not a victim of your own life, but you are somebody who no matter what your circumstances starting are, can make choices to move yourself forward. And I think sometimes, especially as moms, we can tell ourselves these stories that aren't true. I'll give you a perfect example. Sometimes it can feel like, well, I can't show up on video because because my kids are in the house. Instead of thinking that, why don't we think of how can I show up on video? Can I send the kids outside? Could I send them with, you know, a child care provider, a husband, something? Like, could I film outside while my kids are napping? There's a lot of things that you can do. Okay, but we have to make choices. And then sometimes in some seasons, it's making the choice that we're going to choose to not grow our business because our families are busy. That's okay too. But you just want to choose it ahead of time so it doesn't feel like it's happening to you. And part of that is just getting really clear about what you want. Now, if you're listening to this and thinking, okay, but how are you also homeschooling and running a business? I want you to watch the video I'm putting on the screen where I dive into a little bit about what it looks like to homeschool and run a business. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.